three, two, one. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. Hey, friends, Puff and Steph here hanging out on your Friday. Hope everyone is having a fantastic Friday or you're getting ready to have a fantastic Friday or whatever. Getting ready for that weekend, though. Steph, what up? <coughs> you okay? I'm sorry. Wow. I just j- took a sip of water and it went down the wrong pipe, you know? <clears throat> I asked you if you need me to need a second to start the show. You're like, I'm ready. No, I was fine. And then it just hits you sometimes. I was trying to different. tough it out. I was trying to tough it out. <laughs> Today's show brought to you by Freisinger Hyundai. Right in the price, right on the pike. And we are in this inside the American Shaman of PA Studios. Have pain, anxiety, can't sleep. Meet with a certified wellness consultant in American Shaman of PA. Life is better with the feather. Hempishealth.com. Check them out. Okay. So yesterday at the end of the show, I said that I wanted to talk to you about something that I thought we were going to fight about. Oh, I forgot about uh, you, this. You are going to fight with emotion, and I'm going to fight with logic. I'm going to be logical, and you're going to be emotional. Hey, sometimes being emotional works in an argument. Okay. So, last week, the wife's father was paying us a visit from Florida. Okay? And this is the first time he met Frankie, Aww. the puppy. And we were shown one of the games we like to play, which is I have a laser pointer, right? And I shine it around the room, and both dogs yeah. love chasing it's a fun it. game. And he goes, I am shocked that he, the older dog, Mugatu, he goes, I'm shocked that Mugatu has not figured that out. And I'm like, what makes you think he's going to figure that out? He's like, well, obviously you can see your hand move and he sees you have something in your hand and then the laser's on the floor. And I'm like, John, dogs aren't that smart. Oh, no, you did not say that. So I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to talk to you. Do we give dogs too much credit no. for being smart? No. It's a no from me, dog. So so you're shocked he hasn't figured out that I have a piece of technology in my hand that shines a laser on the floor? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I agree with that statement necessarily. It's like when you go to, like, you pretend you're throwing a ball and a dog acts like he's going to chase it. Dogs never really seem to figure that out. Some Sometimes they do. A lot of times they don't. But I still think they're really smart. I'm not saying I'm not saying they're not smart. You literally just said I don't think dogs are that smart. That's not what you I literally said. just said that. No, I said, do we give dogs too much credit for Before being smart? That. No, dogs they are, are not. Really dogs smart. don't understand technology. Dogs aren't like, oh, that's obviously a laser pointer in this hand. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right. Th- that's the kind of stuff I'm talking. About. I'm not talking about. Wow, this dog knows to sit and lay and go get help and. You know, all, all the great work like canine dogs do and, and things like that. They can be trained, you know, to do certain things. And they are smart. But I think sometimes we give them too much credit because they're not as smart as we think. They yeah, are. no, they're insanely smart. Did you know? Okay, Steph, fun fact. Did you know that a dog knows when you're like, you know how like four or five o'clock, a lot of dogs start to get excited. My people are coming home. They know that because th- they can tell how long your smell has been gone for, and they can time it out to be like, she's been gone for eight hours. She's going to be coming home soon. That is incredible. No, she doesn't. They, they don't know that she's been gone for eight hours. It's, they know, it's they just, know the timing of it, though. They know, okay, she should be coming home but soon. These yes, are, they do. These are the don't same, even fight with me about These are this. the same dogs that get so excited because they think you're leaving and never coming back every time you leave. <laughs> okay, but that's just them being so, like, loving. Again, I don't want to sit here and hate on dogs. It's not, it is not my goal. All I'm saying is I think we, through our love of dogs, tend to give them way too much credit. In some cases, yes. Like the laser pointer thing, I agree. Moogie's probably never going to figure that out. Like, I'm literally like, they see me shining it. Right, they see the laser pointing move, and they see the dot on the floor, and they don't put two and two together. Right, and that's right. But and that's what made me want to, want to talk about this is the fact that my father in law was sitting there going, "It's only a matter of time before he figures it out." I'm like, John, I've literally played this game with him every day for the last like six months. He's not going to figure it out. Right, but then there are certain like ways that dogs are amazingly smart. I, again, not saying that. I think that like sometimes we think that they understand things that there's no way possible they can understand you know like 
like technology, like why we leave every day. Like, right, they'll never you, understand that. You know, like things like that. That's all I'm saying, okay? You know, there are there are so many ways that they're so smart, though, so I don't think we give them too much credit, I honestly. Think, I think we do. Like, if I literally pick up my phone and I have it, like, in my hand, like, I'm not holding it up towards my dogs, they won't do any, like, and they're doing something cute, and then if I pull it up like this about to take a picture, they stop what they're doing or move. I swear they know that I'm going to take a picture of them. Every single time. They don't know. They don't know what a picture is. See, you just know, proved my point. They know that something's happening. You just proved my point. No, they I'm don't not know, what they a picture know what a picture is. is. I'm saying that I swear every time I try to give them attention and get close to them with my phone, they move. They're like, nope, you're giving me attention. I don't like that. But if I just sit here and watch them, they'll continue doing the adorable thing they're doing. Zoe, get over here. Come on. We're going to do it for the gram. <laughs> no, I don't think we give dogs too much credit. So, no, I'm not on board your ship here that you're trying to sail. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm a, I'm a one-man ship. <laughs> yep. Captain of my own ship. This is an interesting story. A guy in California is walking from L.A. to San Francisco. It's more than 400 miles in a teddy bear costume. The kind with, like, a big head. Oh, like that's a, creepy. Like a college mascot. That's really creepy. His name's Jesse Laros. Uh, he goes by the name Bear Son yeah, he, uh, when he wears his uh, teddy bear costume. He said the walk sounded like a fun adventure. He spends his nights camping, uh, asking supporters on GoFundMe to help him with food and other costs. Oh, so he uh, doesn't have a job. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to cough now. Are you guys, it's contagious. Yeah, I'm confused why he wants money. <laughs> yeah. Well, he needs money to, for food. Is he doing this like in the name of something or like donating money to something? He says his goal is simple, to spread joy. So he's unemployed. Okay, right, 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 right. So yeah, I mean, is he like, get, like doing something along the way to spread joy, or he's just walking in a creepy costume? No, uh, he said uh, any surplus money from the crowdfunding effort will go toward upgrading his bear costume, and that's it. Yeah, no, not feeling compelled to give to this cause. If like, he was like doing it like to donate to like the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, no, oh no, that'd no, be no. nice. No, no, no. He's just doing it to walk in a bear costume. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not getting any of my money. No? What about uh, what about your time? What if you met him in a party and he's really cute? Like, so what do you do? So I dress up like a bear and I walk places and people give me money through crowdfunding and like Venmo and stuff. No, that's such a turn off. I feel like somebody's career is very important. Like, what do they do for work? And if that's what it is... But the, but but you have said in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not about how much money a guy makes. Is he passionate about what he does? And it's also about a job that's stable. I've also <laughs> said that, which teddy bear right. How many other teddy bear walkers are there out there? <laughs> the answer is probably zero. So he's cornered the market. But is the income steady? That's my thing. Like... Well, it depends on how generous people are, Steph. <laughs> I guess so. No thanks. So but good luck to so you. So you're not dating Bear Son? I don't think so. Not today. He also told me once that dogs were stupid. All right. Uh, <laughs> coming, up, coming up in a couple of minutes. Is this worth free food for a year? Is it? It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717-766-866. 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at HarrisburgPAPawn.com. 
Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. So I'm reading this story and I'm like, you know, free food for a year is pretty nice. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But is it worth this? A California-based restaurant chain, Farmer Boys, is offering customers free burgers for a year if they get a tattoo bearing the Farmer Boys name. Mm. Yeah. To celebrate the 40th anniversary, the restaurant has partnered with a couple of tattoo shops to offer three different two-inch by two-inch tattoo designs that include the name Farmer Boys, a picture of the hamburger. Uh, you get the free tattoo, and you get free burger, a free burger a week for a year. So you get 52 burgers. Does it say where the tattoo has to be? No, I don't think so. So you could put it somewhere and hide it. Maybe make it really small. <clears throat> no, somewhere. it's got to be two-inch by two-inch. I'm trying to picture how big that is. I guess it's pretty small. So about say say it's that. Mm-hmm. See, for me, if we're talking free burgers for life, I'm all in. You're, for a year? You don't even have a tattoo. So your first tattoo would be a Farmer Boys tattoo? Well, that's the thing. For a year, not worth it. I mean, that would be breaking my tattoo seal. And <laughs> I don't know if that's worth it for only a year's worth of free burgers. Lifetime, that's fine. I'm this, down. This is definitely geared to people who already have a bunch of tattoos. Yeah. Because every tattoo has a story, right? So, yeah, I got this tattoo during a tough time in my life. I got this tattoo to celebrate this good thing that happened. Got this tattoo for my mom, my wife, my kids. Got this tattoo for free burgers for a year. <laughs> yep. Like, that's... But if you're like Steph or you're like me, and we don't have tattoos at all, clean slates, bodies are our temples. <laughs> um, you're not... You know, this isn't... This isn't really going to get me to the tattoo shop free burgers for a year, no matter how good the burgers are. No. Again, for life, we, we would be talking about some details. But for a year, I don't think so. I think it has to be somebody who's like, yeah, like you said, maybe a little bit more wild and spontaneous. Like, yeah, I don't care. Put it right here. Give me the burger. We're not like that. What? Uh, where would you, if it was for life, where would you agree to get it? Ooh. Like to what restaurant? Um, oh, where would I get no, the tattoo? No, yeah, where would you get the tattoo? Mm, I still wouldn't really want it anywhere super visible. Maybe, like, on my, like, hip. Your hip. Somewhere that's, like, always covered up. Where girls usually have, like, Playboy tattoos and stuff? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah, somewhere that's program. always hidden. That's never really visible, so that would be fine. Okay, so Steph would get on her hip. I try to cover as much as I can. I just have the bottoms of my arms showing. And my head popping out of my shirt right now. That's pretty much what I like to do. So any place else is fine. So where would you put it? Where'd you pick? <sighs> I don't know. Butt. Put it on the butt. Yep. Uh, nobody's going to see that. My wife doesn't even want to see that. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. And we're, we're finding stories like this a lot with COVID. Everybody's life, uh, they changed. And they were doing stuff that they never did before. Steph... For example, last year during COVID, you picked up the game of golf. Yes. And and, and you like it. And, and, and I love it. So some people uh, in Europe, they're taking up gardening. I, 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 this story is from Europe. I'm sure this happened a lot here too. But uh, it's actually led to a significant increase in the demand for uh, garden gnomes. So now because of COVID, yes. There is a garden gnome shortage. Like, no. like we have the TP shortage. They have a garden gnome shortage. Really? Yeah. The They're in high demand. The supply chain has been disrupted uh, by by that boat that was sideways in the Suez Canal. Remember that oh, thing? Oh, yeah. Is that, also, is that all good now? Yeah. 
Um, okay. So it's going to take a minute for it to catch up. One wow. garden center in the UK says that it hasn't even seen a garden gnome in stock for six months. So that ship was full of garden gnomes? <laughs> I think <laughs> I think there was some garden. There's obviously some garden gnomes on the ship or, wow. or materials to make garden gnomes. Right. And so it just backed up the whole process one way or another. Well, not, not even on the ship necessarily. It could have been on that ship. It could have been on the ships being blocked by the big ship too. Mm. Just when like a ship full of garden gnomes is sideways in the Suez Canal. No. The world, the, the, world, the world supply is shrinking. People are about to panic right in the streets. <laughs> you know, I just don't get the garden gnome appeal. I think they're a little creepy. Uh, the mother-in-law has a bunch of them. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't I'm mean sorry. to offend anybody. Uh, nobody, nobody in my wife's family listens. <laughs> or anybody who is listening that has them. It's just, I just don't know if I'd put them like, if I would decorate my lawn with them. Do you think they'd scare you? Like you didn't know it was there and yeah. you'd, you'd turn a corner. Yeah. And the dogs would bark at them. Zoe would think it was her best friend. Remember when that was like the Travelocity mascot? That's right. That's all. I don't even equate them to gardens. I couldn't do the, the dumb commercials. They marketed well. Uh, a new study from a research institute in Toronto finds that older adults who perform household chores have larger brains. Research examined 66 mentally healthy older adults during their study. Each participant took part in three assessments, a health evaluation, structural brain imaging, and a cognitive test. Results reveal older people who spend more time doing chores have greater brain volume, regardless of how much they exercise. The chores range from cleaning to cooking, going outside and working in the yard and seeing their garden rooms. So... Again, this is older adults. Neither of us are classified as an older adult. But if you knew that it was going to increase your brain activity, would you increase your chores? If I had, if I had to do the chores anyway, but if there was a way that someone else was doing them for me, or I could afford a housekeeper, nope. <laughs> it's like, I don't mind being stupid because I don't like doing dishes. I'll take the risk. <laughs> yeah. So someone's running circles around you mentally when you're older, but you're like, whatever. You had to unload the dishwasher. Exactly. Bunch. Would you? No. God, no. Oh, okay. God, no. <laughs> Just check in. I unloaded the... Usually my wife unloads the dishwasher. I unloaded it the other day. It was exhausting. It's a lot. Keeping took, up with the house. It took like four minutes. Wow. And after okay? Word, afterward, I ran upstairs and I was like, hey. My wife was taking a nap. Hey. I unloaded the dishwasher. She's like, okay. So that should let you know that I'm doing things. You're welcome. Yes, I am that guy. I want complaints. Oh, men want a medal for doing chores? Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Just a, like a like a thank you or a good job pat on the head, good boy, whatever. Just a little something, something, a little recognition. Thank you. Yes. That's fair. You should. I work, I don't say hard. That's, that would have been a lie if I just said it out loud. Um, this is interesting. We hear a lot of stories about cops. This is an interesting cop story. A Tokyo policeman was arrested after he got drunk and wandered into the wrong house to take a bath. Wow, a bath. That's awkward. Yeah, so imagine you're like, what's that noise? It's coming from the bathroom. And then you see there are guys in your bathtub, like, maybe it's a bubble bath, <laughs> just, just wanting to relax, take his time in life. Just, That's terrifying. Is it? Yeah, because you don't know what his intentions are. There's just a naked man in your bathroom. Don't worry, I'm a cop. It doesn't make it better. <laughs> Right, because he's not in uniform, so you can't even believe him. So when I read this story, I was like, okay, let me think about this. Have I ever ended up in the wrong place after a night of drinking? And the only thing I could think of is I ended up in, like, the wrong bedroom. In like, I used to live in a house at college with, like, a lot of guys. Like, right. we were lacrosse players, so it was a lacrosse house. And, yeah, no, I ended up on my buddy Chris's floor... He's like, hey, you, you good? I'm great. This isn't my room, is it? <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that. Um, that's about the extent of it, though. I've never ended up in, a, in the wrong place, which is... Uh, kind of, I'm actually kind of proud of that. There you go. Wear that as a badge of honor. Yeah. Yeah, no. I remember um, I, I have ended up in my house and not remembered how I got home. Yep. And I go, oh, God, and I look outside. My car's not there. I'm like, thank God I didn't drive. <laughs> I've done that. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, Uber exists. Nice. Right. Go me. Thank you, Uber. Responsible Puff. Way to go. <laughs> uh, but that's about it. 
do you want to get into stories or does your mom listen? Oh, my mom wouldn't care. She would laugh. <laughs> um, but no, I'm very like, uh, I'm very like on top of things, even in that state. Like I still will get home, brush my teeth. Like we've talked about this. I put my retainers in. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm still, ev- like regardless of how I'm feeling, I'm like, these things need to happen. I need to get home. I need to do this. I need to get in bed. So that's that, never happened to me. That reminds me before we go to break here. Uh, someone has requested that it's been a long time since we've done Tainer Time with Tef. <gasps> That's right. So Aww. next week, can you remember to bring your retainer I'll in? Break the ba- I'll and break we'll, them bad boys out. And we'll, we'll do Tainer Time yes. with Tef. <laughs> if you've never experienced Tainer Time, you're in for a treat. Uh, coming up next, I guess this was a good plan. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717 766 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at hempishealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. So I guess you could call this guy a bit of a genius. A Taiwanese man came up with a clever plan to get paid leave from work. According to Taiwanese law, a person has the right to eight days paid work leave when they get married. That's interesting. That's really nice. I don't have that here. Nope. Uh, The unnamed bank worker got married last year, April 6th. So he got eight days off. On the last day of his eight-day leave, the man divorced his wife only to marry her again. The next day, he got another paid leave. He went on to marry the same woman four times and divorce her three times in 37 days. Stop. For a total of 32 days off of paid leave. (laughs) But it's like his, his employer allowed that? Well, eventually the bank he worked at figured out what he was trying to do and refused to grant him another eight days. He filed complaint with uh, the city labor bureau, which ruled in his favor. Wow. The bank appealed, but the court upheld the ruling and said that while the bank's clerk conduct was unethical, he had actually not broken any laws. The bank had to pay a fine and presumably another eight days paid vacation. Stop. I love how it says eventually they figured out what he was doing. How long does it take? How many times did he have to get remarried? How big is this bank right? where they don't realize that? Joe's been gone for a month. Right. He got married. Didn't he get married like last month? Yeah. Yeah. They, they had some differences, got divorced, and they got married again. That's weird. <laughs> and he took another eight days. Yeah. All right. Then he does it again. Okay. All right. We put up with one. I think after like, I, I, it's just a different mindset here. I don't think you and I would ever, ever 
consider doing that, taking advantage of the system like that. No, I would just be happy to get eight days off. We I wouldn't just, need more than we that. Would, we would be like, okay, um, how about, can I won't do eight, I'll do six, don't fire me. Yep, exactly. No, nope, he's like, I'm taking another eight, and guess what? We're starting to have problems again. <laughs> so you never know what's going to happen in a week. So, I mean, again, some people call them smart, call them unethical, whatever, but it worked. Time to stump Steph. According to a recent survey, uh, pepperoni is the favorite pizza topping. This is the least favorite. Anchovies. Oh, man, nailed it. Woo! I mean, that, honestly, that was kind of a gimme. You know, I, I think it's the texture. It's like the slime. Have you ever had them? Admittedly, no, but they just seem slimy in my mind. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. Have you? I have not had them on pizza. In a, I want to say in a traditional Caesar salad dressing, there's anchovy. Right, it's true. Anchovy paste or something. Yeah, so that's about the extent of my anchovy consumption. Yeah, they they just make them look really gross on SpongeBob, and I fall into that, and I'm like, oh, those are gross. <laughs> <sighs> These are gross on a cartoon, so I'm not going to eat them in real life, because I fell for it. Cartoon is life. <laughs> All right, uh, this is this is interesting. Uh, the average person will eat 11,000 of these in a lifetime. What are they? Is this something you eat one of at a time? No. I mean, I don't think so unless you're a psychopath. Oh, so it's something that you can't eat just one of. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Is it a snack food? Yeah. Is it like a meal food? No. Okay, so it's a snack food. Yeah. You seemed hesitant. Yeah, it's snack, snacky. Is it healthy? No. Is it dessert related? Yeah. Oh. Is it cold? I mean, you can have them cold or room temperature, not hot. Not hot. Okay, so it's not like a baked good. No. Because those are all good warm. <clears throat> um, cold or room temperature? It's not a baked good. Right. You just said that yourself. I said that with confidence, but you didn't confirm it. No, it's not a baked okay. good. Okay. Trust yourself. But it's dessert. Um. And think about it. 11,000 of these. Right. Um. Other kinds of dessert that are not baked. Some kind of candy? Yep. Is it? Is it, does it involve chocolate? Yeah. Reese's peanut butter cups? 11,000 Reese's peanut butter cups? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had one? They're so good. <laughs> <laughs> I have had one. 11,000 Reese's Listen, peanut butter cups. I'm not judging anybody, okay? <laughs> no, no. But it is candy and it does have chocolate. Yes. Is it a specific like brand? Yeah. Like something you get when you trick or treat? Yeah, you can get it when you trick or treat. And again, 11,000 of them. Hershey Kisses. No. They're little. 11,000 wouldn't be that bad. It's pretty bad. That's, yeah. No judgment. <laughs> again, no judgment. Um, it's Is it all chocolate or is there other stuff in there? Um, Depends on the kind. Mm, is it like Snickers, Twix? Do I have to go through all those? Yeah. Is it one of those? Yeah. Milky Way, Snickers, Twix. Oh, oh God. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just don't go think Fun about... Fun size, Milky think Way. Think about what you're doing here. Well, 11,000 <laughs> of them. Again, I'm not judging people's I am. Choices. You, you're going to die if you have 11,000 <laughs> But Reese's I said, Peter I said, is it a type of candy bar? Uh, no, a no. A type of candy? Yes. But, but then I said, do I have to go through and name all them? And you said yes. Well, no, you don't have to, but... But it's one of them. Yes. So then I don't think that my guesses are that they are, ridiculous. They, once you realize what it is, you will. Is it little? Yes. 11,000 means... Chocolate something? Is the first word chocolate? Many might come in a package. M&M's. Now, mm. now do you see why... Now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's candy. Yeah, but you I said you eat multiple. And you're thinking to yourself, I can eat two or three Snickers as a pop, fun, fun size. Fun size. Yeah, but you're eating like 50 M&Ms at a pop. 
Right. So now you're talking about 11,000 in your life. Right. Now that adds up. That makes sense. Right. Math. Math is hard. All right, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll be back on Monday. Bye. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. 